artists, it's Mrs. RT, the art teacher from the Angelo School. For today's project, you're going to need a piece of paper, a pencil, and then whatever you have to color with. I'm going to outline with a black marker, but you could use a black crayon as well. And then you will need lots of color. You could use crayons, markers, colored pencils, whatever you have at home to color with. So today we're going to start with a reading of the great Kapok tree, and then we're going to make a rainforest tree frog together. The Great Kapok Tree, written by Lynn Cherry. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet, as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapok tree. Then he left. The smaller man took the axe he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack! 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 The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop! 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 The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack! Chop! Whack! Chop! Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapok tree. Before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the kapok tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear. Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this kapok tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapok tree. They chatted to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away and the forest will become a desert. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush, and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smouldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear. Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great kapok tree. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? 
oxygen. And, senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forests, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Several ant eaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped ant eater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future, and surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? A child from the Yanomamo tribe, who lived in the rainforest, knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child, and all around him, staring, were the creatures who depended upon the great kapok tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapok tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor, but he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated. Then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. Dear readers, I wrote the great Kapok tree to let the world know what happens to the rainforest creatures and to the entire planet when rainforests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforests. The Great Kapok Tree is about the Amazon rainforest, a tropical rainforest, but we have a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest of the United States that we must protect too. Please care for Mother Earth. Together, we can make a difference. Lynn Cherry So that was a reading of the Great Kapok Tree. I'm going to show you on the map, the rainforest that that book was talking about is in South America. It's the Amazon rainforest right there. And today we're going to draw one of the many creatures that live in the rainforest. We are going to draw one of the frogs. So you could see on this page that all of these frogs are different colors. And in the Amazon rainforest, there are over 400 species of different frogs. So the color on the frogs could be any type of color you want. If you would like to research different frogs, you could pick the color of one that is real that you can see, or you can make up your own colors with your crayons. So if you need to grab your materials, now would be a good time to pause the video and grab your paper, pencil, and something to color with, and you can play it when you're ready. For this frog, you can see I have three different color examples. We're going to start with the eyes. So we have two big circles for the eyes. And inside the eyes, we have that long, thin strip right in the middle. And that's the part we will color on the eye. So in the middle, you can make two lines coming down. And you're going to do that on both sides, both of those circles. 
That's the part we will color after we outline the frog. And at the top of the eye, we're going to make a small line coming down on both sides. That will be the eyelid for the frog. And then a line in the middle to connect it to the top of the head. And for the rest of the face, we're going to come on the side of the eye and continue a big oval going all the way around the face. So you can start up here on the side of the eye, on the outside. Make a big oval for the face. You can see I added some spots on the top of the head in between the eyes and on the top of the hands to give it a little bit more color and detail. Some of the frogs in the book that we saw had a lot of different markings on them. So just add a few little spots in, in between the eyes. Then we have a big frog mouth going all the way across the page. So I start on one side, bring it over. I usually drop, dip it down a little bit in the middle and then back up. The two little dots above for the nostrils. Then for the hands, a lot of these you can see that they're holding leaves. In the book, you could see that the frogs were both on leaves and on branches. So you can choose for that part if you want it to be a leaf or a branch when you're coloring it in. But to start with the hands, we do a shape, kind of like a rainbow shape or an upside down letter U. one on each side. Then for the fingers, we're gonna start on the edge, curve up to the middle, back down, and curve again. Same thing on this side. Curve to the middle, and curve to the end. And then at the point of the fingers we do, or the point of the hands, we'll do a little circle. That's what would help them stick to the trees or the leaves. And then a few circles, little dots on the hand to give it a little bit more color and detail. You can see the frog is holding onto this leaf. So we're going to do one line that goes across behind the hands, like the hands are coming up and holding it. And then when we color it, you can decide, is that a leaf? Is it a branch? You can decide when you start to color. And then for the body of the frog, we're just gonna drop down two lines from the face to the hands. And then from all the pictures in the books, you saw that a lot of those um, rainforests had a lot of leaves and trees and different nature growing. So I usually draw some vines and leaves coming up behind the frog. We saw so many different animals and species that lived in the rainforest and the whole book was about protecting the rainforest and the natural world. And one more vine on this side with some leaves. And now you can get creative and color it. I liked to make mine bright. I have a couple of different examples that you can see of different types of colorful frogs. And there are over 400 species in the Amazon rainforest alone. 
So you could make yours into many different colors. So that was our lesson about the great kapok tree and the rainforest frog. You can take some time, color in your frog, and stay creative. I'll see you next time.